And that's why we started our conversation today. I'm failing to see what the win is for the 49ers to have him on their roster on Tuesday. If there was a win there, they'd have done it. They'd have done it. They're just they're, there. There is a win there, but the bigger win is to have him a, it's, somewhere else. It's such a, 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 quite frankly, a wild set of circumstances. And I to, laid it out before, and right. it is a little it's, bit. It's a little bit wild yeah. in terms of how it could help them. So many ifs, and this helps them more in terms of closure. So now you can turn the page, and Kyle Shanahan at some point will have to answer questions about it. And now that the deal is done, he can be magnanimous and he can be generous with his words because he doesn't have to, you know, sugarcoat anymore. And again, Mark, the actions speak louder than the words anyway. And the actions are you traded up to get him. It didn't work out for a variety of reasons. And now he's on not to Cincinnati, but he's on to Dallas. And Brandon Allen gets to be QB3. Thinking about tonight, how do you allocate the quarterback reps now going into this game? And Brock Purdy will probably get a yep. series or two, I think the word is. They, yep. they want to get him eight to ten plays with the ones. Do you go right away to Brandon Allen and say, you get the rest of the game? Do, no, do you I, risk putting Sam out there for a quarter or so? I think you do. I think you Look, they call this the dress rehearsal. I think you do a dress rehearsal. You go in order. If you're willing to put Brock on the field, you're willing to put Sam on the field. True. Right? So if Brock's going to get a couple series, I think Sam gets a handful more. Does that get you to halftime? Maybe. And then Brandon Allen, you know, now you got to be, brother, you're on the roster now. You're the emergency QB. And he's been short on reps in the last handful of weeks because, A, they're trying to showcase Trey Lance, and, B, he had a baby. So he missed a full week of practice. So Brandon now... Needs to catch up to speed. Yeah, I definitely think he's got the most passing attempts in him tonight. Brandon Allen, for sure. Yeah, that's, it, that's it makes what the most think. sense. But you're probably right. You do want Sam Darnold to get a little bit more of a dress rehearsal. And uh, I wonder how the crowd reacts when Kyle Shanahan is shown. Because there are some fans not happy about this trade today. Oh, of course not. Do you boo Shanahan <laughs> at the third preseason game? No. I would not. Would, you know, maybe a smattering. Yeah, I'm not saying a, that's a, the, that's the a cacophony of booze. Don't but Don't you think the majority, like, and I know where we live, this echo chamber, but, I mean, the majority of the fans are excited about a 13-4 and four team that's back and loaded up and ready to roll, don't you think? I think they're getting there, but we've all been consumed by this QB question of QB2. Is Brock going to be ready? Yes, no. he is. Who's the backup? Now it's Sam. What happens to Trey? Well, now we know. So it was I think interesting. Now that we've gotten through all of that, and now here we are at the end, the finish line, and come Tuesday, when the roster is finalized, I would imagine it's Purdy, Darnold, and Allen that the three QBs get kept. Totally. I, I agree completely. And then we can move on. And I want to, by the way, can I defend for a moment every single body, including us, who spent all this time, quote unquote, talking about QB three, and therefore it sounds like a like why are we spending all this time on QB three? We're not spending time on QB three. We're spending time on an interesting story. This is an unbelievable story. Do you all watch Netflix? They don't do documentaries on like well, so like this guy who we expected to be really good was really good. That's not a story. This is an absolutely banana land occurrence in human life that the 49ers moved their entire organization upside down to draft a player who essentially never played and got beat out by someone with the nickname Mr. Irrelevant. That is unbelievable. So this whole thing, like people being made to feel like they're uh, – clickbait drama chasers because we're talking about this I, I don't buy it this is super interesting and, and it has reached its final chapter anyway here in san francisco and so we're reading a book october the, 8th this is the final chapter cowboys at niners yeah. sunday night football it's the final chapter of the niner era and i can't help but think about where this goes for trey lance from here and, you know, if Dak Prescott stays healthy and he's the backup or he's the three all year and he doesn't play, we'll keep an eye on it for sure. But you mentioned it before. If Brock Purdy gets hurt and Sam Darnold comes in and stinks or sees ghosts or he gets hurt or whatever happens bad 
with the quarterback position, all eyes immediately go back to Trey and Kyle Shanahan. I mean, and my comment to you Wednesday, I stand behind it. This had better work. And you know, when I say this had better work, I meant having Sam Darnold be the two. And now that comment even fits more today with him trading Trey Lance. Okay, this had better work. Well, Either you don't need Brandon Allen yeah. or if you go to Sam Darnold, he plays well. This better not hurt you this year, the fact that you traded Trey Lance for a pick. I, I, I agree with that, except for that I'd also say uh, NFL teams, I think, operate under that idea all the time. Whatever we're doing, better sure, work. of course. And, and secondly, I don't think the Sam comes in and doesn't look perfect really necessarily bites you unless Trey is also playing well somewhere else. I disagree. Like, I think people will say it. They'll say you shouldn't have traded Trey. Of course. But it, 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 it factually doesn't really lead to anything relevant or that you can sink your teeth into until you know that Trey would have been a better option. You can say it. Yeah. You can think it. Well, what it but leads you can't to prove is, it until you see that Trey can play. You, it leads to rampant speculation sure, sure. over the fact that, no doubt. No doubt. that you traded a guy. I mean, you traded up to get him, and then you gave up on him for a guy who comes in and doesn't play well. That definitely opens you up to that same sort of speculation. We're already there, by the way. It already looks terrible. It already but they went terrible. thirteen and four, so it looks better so than it's it okay. would. That's, the, yeah. that's what the way I look at it. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I mean, it's not ideal. No, <laughs> but you win thirteen not, and four. Not a great process as far no, as drafting. Exactly. But yeah, you're winning. Aaron and Martinez next up on uh, Willard and Dibs. Hey, Aaron, thank you for calling. What's up, gentlemen? Willard and Dibs, great show as always. Love to get on with you. Thanks. Hey, uh, I'm a uh, thirty year Dallas Cowboys fan. And, Thanks for the call, Aaron. Uh, um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Look, it's tough to do that in the Bay Area. Okay? Yep. But, yep. but here's the deal. I think the Dallas Cowboys did this for two reasons, and I really like what Dib said. I think, one, they took a flyer because who knows? Maybe he works out. I watch every Niners game just because it's my market, so I watch them all, and I totally agree he has trouble processing. Okay, But maybe he does develop. I also think they're trying to light a fire under Dak. And huh. the Cowboys are sending Dak a message. And the message is, hey, man, time to get it done. Right? It is time to get time to get in gear and get us to an NFC championship after a 28-year drought of no NFC championships. And if you don't, we got a potential backup plan, especially with his extension looming in the not-too-distant future. I think it's uh, a really good point, Aaron. I, I, yeah, I really do. And, and and you know, none of us are experts on the uh, on the Cowboys. Aaron, thanks. Um, none of us are experts on the Cowboys per se, um, but especially with their season ending here at Levi's last year, you, you you know what that sounded like, and you know what it looked like. And and Dak Prescott is definitely facing a spot. Man, the conversation you and I walked into t- today, Dibs. Kyle can't win the big one. Yeah. No, no, no. Now, now you want to give that label to someone where it applies maybe a little bit more is Dak Prescott. That's that's someone where, and I, all I can, that's just how Dallas fans feel. It, it's great that you might be able to win a division or get us to the playoffs, but you cannot advance in the playoffs. They have not, you know, they have not. I know they beat the Bucs last year, uh, but that was not a good football team. Sure. And uh, and so that that's an interesting take that that maybe Dallas is trying to uh, send a message to their quarterback. Yeah, and he's a guy who has gotten a boatload of money, and to your point, hasn't really gotten it done in the postseason. 2018, they beat Seattle, and then they lost to the Rams, and then back-to-back years where they didn't make the playoffs, and then they lost to the Niners. So Dak Prescott's been in a spot where he hasn't yet won the big one. And, you know, you can blame the coach in the past. You can blame the coach in the current. In Dallas, especially, they're used to winning. They have a long history of winning, so they want results. And if Trey Lance lights a fire under Dak Prescott, so be it. 49ers have traded Trey Lance to the Dallas Cowboys for a fourth-round pick in next year's draft. Obviously, Trey will not play in the football game tonight for the 49ers. We're talking about it right here on Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Bobby in Oakland is next up. Hi, Bobby. Thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me on, fellas. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I have a just different view of this for, him, uh, for Trey. I think it's uh, it's going to be a mistake, just like Charles Haley and Dion went from the, from the 49ers to the Cowboys. 
to come back to hunt him. Despite all the narratives about Trey, yeah, something justified, whatnot, I saw him in the fourth quarter starting to really get into a groove, getting the throwing some beautiful balls downfield. Gets with Dallas. He'll grow. He'll develop. Maybe I don't know how much he's going to play this year, but at some point, I think he'll come back and haunt the 49ers. I think they should have found a way to keep him, despite all the, the, the whatever distractions. This is professional sports. Deal with it. Let him develop. But, okay, let him go to Dallas. I think he, his talent will come through. I just think it's a mistake to, to send him over to Dallas. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can certainly think that, Bobby, although I, I, I guess my, my answer to that would be what – is it that you actually would have had the 49ers do to put a plan in place for his development considering their current situation? Keep him at the third string. Keep him at the third string and just let him continue to get better. I saw a remarkable improvement from the Raiders game. Granted, it's piece three seasons from the Raiders game to the last season, which tells me this guy is going to continue to get better if given a real opportunity. Again, I don't know how much he's going to play this year. With yeah. That. But at some point, he will, he will develop, and, and, and that talent will come through. Bobby, you might be right. The bottom line is, though, when you say keep him as the three and let him keep developing, once a season starts, that's just really hard to do. Yeah, there's no snaps there, for there, a three. There's, there, there's no more preseason games. And and, and no, there's no practice time when you're getting ready for the Steelers or the Cowboys or the Rams or whoever's coming in that week. When you're QB3, you don't get a look. Brock Purdy got like a couple throws a day. That's it. When, when, when he was QB3, uh, at least early in the season, I guess he was QB3 only for two, uh, two weeks, and then he became right. QB2 when Trey was out. But you, you don't get a lot. You don't get a lot. I don't know what he's going to get in Dallas. Probably not a lot. And I was just uh, doing some research during that call. Uh, Will Greer is QB3. And he's going to get most of the snaps against uh, the Las Vegas Raiders in the third and final preseason game, largely as a showcase and an audition. The expectation is that Greer won't make the final cuts in Dallas and that Trey Lance will be QB3. So he'll be behind Cooper Rush, at least in the beginning, which makes sense. Cooper Rush played pretty well for Dallas yeah, last he year. He won some games. When he got the gig, and he knows the system. So for Dallas, it's kind of a inexpensive lottery ticket. You pay six and six million and change, and you give up a fourth round pick for a two year look at a guy who could wind up being Dak's replacement. You mentioned the numbers for Dak. After next year, you're able to get out from underneath uh, Dak's contract. And I'm looking right now, uh, yeah, cap savings next year. You'd have a zero cap hit after the mm -hmm. end of next season yeah, for, for Dak. Exactly right. Ken in uh, San Carlos is next up here on Withered and Dibs. Hi, Ken. What are you doing? How's it going, guys? Big time uh, fan of yours. Love the show. Thank you, Ken. Uh, something's, just, something's just been eating at me all day, and it's uh, with, with the biggest sacrifice that we made to get Trey Lance, the 49ers had to believe that there was another team or multiple teams that were going to take Lance before number 12 for us to trade up for him. So who are those teams? I don't think we'll ever find out maybe, maybe 20 years from now, but I'd just like to hear your thoughts on that. Um, that is an interesting question, actually. So, okay, uh, you've got to uh, you got to move up. Now, there's the whole story about who they were moving up for, like the idea of we are uh, we believe that someone's going to take Trey Lance. Well, hold on, did they move up even thinking they were going to take Trey Lance, or was it the 49ers so focused on as we now know we need a quarterback on a rookie deal? So let's just take. All of the guesswork out of this. We get to three, and we know we're going to get one of them. Yeah. We don't even necessarily know who yet. You're not getting Trevor Lawrence. You but, knew that. Yeah, and you're not getting Zach Wilson. You knew that. Pretty certain about that right? one. But, but you get to three knowing that let's just take all of the noise out of play and not worry about them getting taken in front of about us. who falls to 12. And then we can go do an open evaluation of Lance Fields and Jones and make our decision and pick whichever one we want. That's kind of the story. I don't know how true it is, but but that's the story. Right. And and, and so who are the teams that you were trying to uh to jump? I mean, obviously none of them took a quarterback um except for the Chicago Bears. They took Justin Fields. I got to remind myself exactly what pick that was though. 
Um, Justin Fields? That was at 11. Yeah. The 49ers were at... Um, they were at 12, They were I at 12. They were at 12, and the pick went to Miami and then went to Philly and then into Dallas, and it ended up being Micah Parsons. Atlanta might have taken a quarterback. Uh, the Bengals the had Falcons, Burrow. Yeah, the Falcons took Pitts at four. The Dolphins had Tua. Uh, the Lions, I believe, had already traded for Jared Goff at that point, so they, they were out of it. They had. Carolina... Uh, they, they still have Jake DeLome? Uh, Probably two not. Two years ago, was Cam Newton still there? Yeah, Carolina was two, always two in need of a quarterback. Yeah, exactly. I, Denver, I don't think, had Den- Russ yet. Denver Broncos were definitely... Um, de- de- yeah. They're, so, bottom line is this. There were you, a couple of teams you, you don't were worried know, about, right? You don't know, but if the 49ers are like, I, we don't want to deal with that. Like, there's the Bears, there's the Broncos, the Panthers, the Falcons. They're all sitting in there. Is there a chance sitting at 12 we get none of them? Yeah. Yeah, there was. There absolutely was. And Mac Jones eventually went yeah, 15 to New England. So, yeah, it's it's tough to say. Bottom line is you look back on it and you blew it. You blew it. Sure, sure. You blew it and, and it may or may not hurt.